One of the biggest limitations in 3D printing is the inability to swap colors easily. Now, unless you have a Bamboo Lab printer that can do that for you, or have a fancy 3D printer with a tool changer on it, chances are you're gonna be swapping colors manually during your 3D prints in order to get color swaps. It, it's me, I, I'm in that boat. But just because I don't have a machine that can automatically do that for me, it doesn't mean you can't set up color swaps easily on your 3D printer. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do exactly just that on two different slicers, on Kira and on Prusa Slicer to show you no matter what slicer you use, you can set up color swaps to get some really nice looking 3D prints. So with that being said, let's swap into the intro and let's get today's video started. Hey everybody, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see everybody here again and I hope everyone's doing well. So in today's video, we're gonna break down step-by-step step how to set up color swaps on both printers using Cura Slicer as well as using Prusa Slicer. For Prusa Slicer, we're gonna use our Prusa XL as the example, which is actually over here. And then for Cura Slicer, we're gonna use our Solvo SVO6 Plus, which is directly behind me. You can barely see it. There it is right there uh, for our demonstration today. While both slicers have a slightly different setup in getting color swaps enabled into your slicer and your G-code, it's really easy to do it on both Cura and Prusa Slicer. So no matter which slicer you choose in this scenario, you're gonna be able to do this really easily and it should take you no more than a couple extra minutes setting up your G-code and your slicing uh, for your 3D model. For this video demonstration, you can use any 3D model you'd like to test out your color swap capabilities. However, I suggest using a smaller model like a Benchy or an XYZ calibration cube just so you're not wasting a ton of filament. However, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set all this up using my maker coin as an example. I made this maker coin last year to hand out at RepRap events across the country. And it's a simple print, but it has a color swap built into the print so you can get that two-tone checkerboard-like pattern on the front. First, let's set up our Cura Slicer to enable color swaps. To start, you're gonna open up Cura as normal, import your 3D model, and get your slicer settings dialed in. I'm actually gonna hide my face for this next part so you guys can just see the full screen. Once you're done setting up your model and your slicing settings, then you're gonna go hit slice at the bottom right corner. So once you slice, you're gonna hit the preview button or hit the preview tab at the top. And then you're gonna look at your layer by layer print settings. Now, once you hit preview, go to the far right of Cura until you see the layer by layer analysis bar where you can drag it up and down and see each layer being printed. Now for color swapping, we're gonna to wanna to find the first layer of that color swap. So in this case, we wanna find the first layer that will change colors. In this particular model in the maker coin, we wanna find the layer that when that checkerboard pattern finally starts showing up, that's the first layer we want to have a different color. So if we go down here and scroll down this bar, we can see that this checkerboard pattern starts at about layer 43. We're gonna to wanna to remember the numbers of those layers that are gonna have different colors for the next step. Once we know what number layer we need to color swap, we're gonna go up here to extensions. We're gonna to go to post-processing and click the modify G-code button. From there, we're gonna add a script and we're gonna to go to filament change. We're not gonna do color mix. We're not gonna do pause at height or insert layer change. The G-code may work in that case, but depending on your printer, some printers act differently at some of these commands. Filament change for me has worked the best, so we're gonna click filament change here. Now at filament change, this is where you're gonna put in the layers you want to swap filament at. Like I said, we're gonna be modifying this at layer 43, so we're gonna put in layer 43 in our layer category here. Now if there's multiple layers in your print that are gonna have different color swaps, all you need to do in Cura is add a comma next to the, after the last number and then add the next number after that. So you wanna put that in the order of the color swaps. You wanna do numerical order on that. Um, so in this case, 43 is gonna be the first layer. Say if there was another one at layer 50, you could do one at layer 50 like that, say 75 and so on and so forth. But in this particular case, we're only gonna have one color swap layer and that's gonna be layer 43. Now your next settings are just showing how much your filament's gonna retract during the color swap process, as well as your X, Y, and Z location of your hot end when it does so. So in my case with the Solval SVO6 Plus, the machine's firmware actually has firmware enabled to be able to do color swaps fairly easily and it knows what to do. 
So in my case, I can click use firmware configuration and it should take care of a lot of that for me. The only thing I'm gonna have to set is my Z position uh, during the color swap. In my case here, because this Maker Quinn's really tiny, I'm gonna set the Z height to 100 millimeters just so the hot end's out of the way, but that's gonna depend on what you're printing and how big or tall you're printing. You just wanna keep that in mind. Now, if you wanna have a little bit more manual control over this whole process, or your printer's firmware doesn't have an automatic detection of what to do during a filament swap, then you can uncheck that box and have more control over the settings here. By unchecking that use firmware configuration box, you can manually set some of these settings like your initial retraction or later retraction distance. The initial retraction, that's just showing your initial retraction of the filament once that color swap process starts. Your later retraction distance is just at, uh, telling the printer how much to pull out the filament from your printer. So if you have a longer Bowden tube on your printer, uh, you should set that value fairly high. If you have a direct drive machine, it doesn't need to be set at 300. It could be set probably at 100 millimeters and get the filament out of the printer easily. Um, that's just there to let the printer know how much it needs to push out the filament so you can get it out easily and swap in a new color. You can also set your X, Y, Z position of your hot end uh, accordingly, and you can manually set this depending on what you're printing and your printer setup as well. If you're printing bigger or taller, you wanna keep that in mind so you're not running into your print while you're trying to color swap. Again, it'll be dependent on your printer setup and what you're printing and how big it is. But for my case here, this maker coin's really small, so 100 millimeters in the Z position uh, should be enough away from that coin, so it's not gonna be interfering with it at all. So once you have your settings confirmed, you're then gonna hit close. And then I'm gonna hide my face again because you're now gonna see a little red uh, number one right next to the slice button and you're going to see this little window pop up where it has change active post processing scripts that red circle with the one around it is going to indicate you do have your filament change script enabled for this slice so at this point all you should have to do is click that slice button and it should be automatically built into your g-code for this print job at this point there's nothing else you need to do other than save this g-code file to your sd card and then transfer the sd card to the 3d printer now, one thing to keep in mind during this whole process is that you have to remember that any future print you do in Kira, until you physically disable this plugin, is going to have a color swap at layer 43. No matter what you print after this maker coin, at layer 43, it still thinks you want to do a color swap. So you do need to make sure you disable this plugin before you continue any other prints that you may not want to do color swaps in. To do this, it's a really simple process. You just click on this little tab where the red circle with the one is, Click on that to bring up your post-processing script tab. And then under the filament change plugin, you're gonna click the X here to the far right and it will get rid of it automatically. From there, you just click close and then you re-slice your print. So to enable color swaps in your prints in Prusa Slicer, it's actually a little bit easier setup than Kira. First things first, you're going to import your model into Prusa Slicer and get your settings dialed in the way you want them to. Once your settings are good to go, all you do is hit the Slice Now button and let that export. Once this slices, you're gonna go to the right-hand side of Prusa Slicer, kind of similar to how we did in Cura, and toggle that bar that shows each layer by layer being printed. Now we're gonna look for that layer again that we want the color swap to happen. So in this case, again, we want that checkerboard pattern to be the first layer we do a color swap. So we're gonna find it right around here, uh, around layer 35. Now, instead of making a note of that number, we're actually gonna click this little plus sign right here, and that's gonna actually separate and distinguish a color swap automatically in Prusa Slicer. So you can now see everything above layer 35 is gonna be a different color than what we started with. And the slicer is gonna automatically detect that through clicking that little plus sign right there. So you can see in the slicer now, everything above that layer is now indeed a different color, which is what we want. Now you can also distinguish different colors in the slicer to get a better visualization of what materials you're actually printing with. You don't necessarily need to do this in this step, but in our case, just to give you guys a better idea of the colors I'm using, uh, we're gonna change this to yellow and purple. Uh, you can left click on the color square here in the filament drop down. You can change the color there that way. And then on the actual bar here where it's showing the screen color, you can then right click and bring up those color options as well. And I'm just gonna do a really dark purple just to give it a little bit of a distinguished color um, for the yellow and purple of our channel colors. So again, you don't need to do that. This is just an extra step, but that's how you enable color swaps in Prusa Slicer. Pretty simple, pretty easy, and it works every single time.
Now that we have these files sliced, let's get these 3D printers up and running and test out our color swaps. With that, another Maker Coin looking great. And there you have it. That's how you set up color swaps on both Cura Slicer and Prusa Slicer to get really easy manual color swaps in your 3D prints. I can't tell you how easy it's been to add color swaps to many of my prints. Here's a few examples of some color swap prints that I've done in the past year or so um, of different signs, different um, projects, and it's, it's worked out flawlessly every single time. Speaking of projects, this was one of my very first color swap tests. This is a logo of the 2024 Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. It's coming up very soon in Loveland, Colorado, April 20th, 21st. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna have a maker table. If you're going to the event, come see me, come say hi, and uh, hope to see you there if you're going. Let me know how you plan on using color swaps in your 3D prints or projects. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any other tips or suggestions that I didn't end up covering in today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, please go do so. It helps me out and is greatly appreciated. Plus, you get to know when the next video drops. And I'm trying to get back into YouTube a lot more. So it's going to drop sooner than you think. Don't forget, you can also follow me on my other social media platforms. I also live stream on Twitch a few nights a week. All the links to all my social media platforms will also be in the description. That being said, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you as always. I'll catch you in the next video. And until next time, keep doing it big.